Hello, I'm Andrea Sölund. I'm the lead developer for the Enservices project and today we are going to talk about upgrading from Enservice Pass 2.6 to the soon to be released uh, 3.0 version. And we're going to do that by upgrading one of the samples and and to get a walk through the different issues that might that might occur. So uh, I'm gonna start off here with a full duplex sample here. Uh, so I'm just gonna hit F5 to see that it's that it's running. As you see in the title bar here, it's the 2.6 version here, uh, build 1504. Uh, essentially, that's a client sending a message to a server, which is then uh, responding back. So sending a message off. And we'll see that the server gets the request and sends response back. So the sample seems to be working. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to upgrade the binaries to the 3.0 binaries. And we'll see what happens then. Okay, when it comes to updating to the new binaries, we have a few options here. Uh, one of them would be to go to the inservicebus.com site and uh, download the uh, binaries from there. But I'm going to use NuGet to pull them down. So I'm just going to jump into the package manual console here. Uh, I've chosen the My Client project as a default one. So we're going to start off there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the latest version of inservicebus. I'm just going to call install package inservicebus.host. But given that we haven't released yet, I need to tell NuGet that it's okay to pull down pre-releases. So I'm just gonna give it the command line argument dash pre. And if I hit return, it's gonna pull the latest version of Service Bus and it's going to install that into the project. So as you can see, it's pulling down the RC5 here and it installed it into the My Client project. So I'm just gonna do the same for the My Server project. And finally, uh, we're gonna upgrade a test project as well. Uh, so I'm just gonna call and service bus dot testing because that's the package that contains the testing support for and service bus. And finally, we are going to upgrade the message assembly. Uh, and there we don't need, we only need the interfaces. So I'm just gonna specify install package and service bus and that's pretty much all we need to do for now okay so now i've dropped in the 3.0 binaries in the bin folder and i'm just going to rebuild the product here and we will see if that gives us some errors so we've got one com compiler here uh, saying that we need to specify the type argument for the callback here. Uh, so in 3.0, uh, you need to put the explicit type here. So in this case, it's gonna be an int. So I'm just gonna put an int on there. And that solves all the compilation issues. Uh, okay, so next step is of course to see if this is still running. So we're gonna hit F5 and we'll see here. Uh, <clears throat> And also see here we get an error saying that uh, the input queue entry on the MSMQ transport config section is obsolete and by default the queue name is taken from the class name space where the configuration is declared. Uh, so in 3.0 uh, we set the input queue name to the same name as your endpoint. Uh, so this means that you now need to name your endpoints to, to use the same name as the input queue you had in 2.6. So uh, let's see how we can fix that. Let's start off with the server here. So we go into app config, and as you see, uh, the current input queue for the server is my server input queue. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna copy that, gonna remove the entry to avoid the error, save it, and go back to our endpoint config. So in this case, I could either update my namespace or there is another way as well I can uh, put an attribute on here uh, and I'm gonna use the endpoint name attribute so if I specify it there to set it to be my server input queue this 
essentially sets the name of this endpoint to my server input queue and it will then cause the endpoint to use a local input queue with the same name. <clears throat> so let's start off, uh, start up the server and see if it still works. Let's see here. So it seems to be starting. We got uh, some warnings, but uh, no error. So uh, we'll look later on how we can actually remove those warnings. But for now, that seems to be good enough. So let's go over to the client here and do the same thing. Let's copy the my client input key here. And move it and go into the client endpoint here. Sorry, the endpoint config. And this time I'll actually change the namespace here. So that's the default endpoint name when you use the generic host that comes with a service bus. So let's hit F5 and see if the sample is, is running. We got some warnings. That's fine. That's fine. Seems to be started. So okay, let's send the message off and hopefully the server will pick it up and send the response. Yes. Okay, so let's take a close look at that error and see, uh, sorry, that warning and see what we can do about it. So the first one there is that message forwarding in case of fault. We couldn't find the section name that and therefore we're going to fall back to read the error queue from the MSM queue transport config. So if you jump into the config file here, you'll see that the error queue, i.e. the queue where um, any message that fails uh, will eventually end up in the error queue. And in 2.6, that setting was on the MSMQ transport config. That's still supported in 2.0, uh, sorry, in 3.0. But in 3.0, there is a special section that, 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 that you should use instead. So let's try and update our file to use that section instead. So I'm just going to copy paste that section in from a, from a sample here. So uh, that means that now we have this special section here, we can actually remove the error setting from there. And that should actually get rid of our error. So let's do the same for the, for the server. So let's paste it in and remove the error there. And now if we hit F5, we should only get one warning. And this time I'm going to get a warning uh, because we're running the community version of Ansaris Bus and that's limited to one thread. And that's the reason why I get that warning because it couldn't find a licensing file. Therefore, uh, the thread limit is set to one. Yes, uh, that's pretty much all you need to, to know to upgrade from uh, 2.6 to 3.0. But there are a few other things that I just want to point out here. So the first one is that we really got read a most of the configuration. Uh, most of it are sensible defaults and um, and conventions. So in, in this case, the server part, we can actually get rid of the number of threads and the uh, max retries because the default is one and five. So I'm just gonna remove it. And we can also get rid of the unicast bus config because in this case, we don't really need it because we don't have any endpoint mapping. So I'm just gonna remove that one as well. So let's get rid of that comments. As you see, this makes the config a lot more cleaner than it used to be in 2.6. So let's start our server up and see that it's still working. Yes, it started up fine. So the final thing I want to talk about is the the profile. So I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. So as you see here, uh, the printout is telling us that it, we that the service bus is going to activate the profile called end service bus production. Uh, this is another change from 2.6 because in 2.6 the light profile was a default. Uh, the light profile means that everything is stored pretty much in memory and that's not a suitable profile for production. So in 3.0 we decided to by default use the production profile to avoid users having problem uh, not specifying the profile and ending up using the light profile and thereby risking, risking to lose messages in production. So to change that 
The only thing you need to do is to specify the actual profile you want to use on the command line. So let's do that for our, my server here. So I'm just going to go in there and on the command line I'm going to specify and service bus dot light. So this causes the server to start up in the light profile, storing things like subscriptions, sagas, timeouts, things like that in memory. So let's start up, up the server here again. And we'll see that uh, the light profile is now used. You can see here activate profile and service bus light. So that's pretty much all you need to know to go from 2.6 to 3.0. So hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.